On a gloomy morning in August, a palpable tension settled over the Westminster Magistrates' Court as Kavanaugh materialized on the video screen, the connection crackling with uncertainty. The atmosphere was heavy with expectation, as the charges, each laden with the gravity of lethal weaponry, were meticulously recited. The infamous crime lord remained stoic, his arms folded, his countenance etched with unwavering determination. He absorbed every word with an eerie intensity. However, the courtroom was soon jolted by a bombshell revelation from the judge that sent shockwaves reverberating through every corner of the building. The implications of this revelation were dire. It was disclosed that Thomas Bomber Kavanaugh, a senior figure within the notorious Kinahan cartel, had struck a deal with the UK's National Crime Agency. The court proceedings revealed that Kavanaugh had disclosed the location of a secret cartel arms cache in a bid to secure a reduced prison sentence, ultimately leading the authorities to the concealed cache of 11 deadly weapons. The pressing question at hand revolves around whether this daring gamble will yield success or result in a catastrophic reversal of fortune. The once revered kingpin now finds himself tarnished with the ignominious label of an informant and a duplicitous turncoat. His own associates, the very moles he relied upon, are beginning to distance themselves from him. It's evident that Bomber Kavanaugh has skillfully maneuvered himself into a perilous predicament that strikes fear into the heart of every criminal. Thomas Bomber Kavanaugh, a figure of infamy within Ireland's criminal underworld, assumed leadership of the Kinahan Cartel's UK branch after relocating to the United Kingdom. He is known to be married to Joanne Byrne, the sister of Liam and David Byrne, solidifying his connections within the criminal world. Additionally, Bomber Kavanaugh is affiliated with the Byrne Crime Organization, a significant component of the Kinahan's extensive criminal network. However, in the year 2022, the final act played out for the Kingpin as he faced a crushing 21-year prison sentence. This formidable punishment was meted out for his orchestration of a colossal 200 million euro drug smuggling operation, which was subsequently reduced to 36 million euros following his admission of guilt. Presently, a cloud of speculation envelops Kavanaugh's interactions with law enforcement. As the investigation progressed, it came to light that Bomber was more than willing to divulge insider information about his criminal undertakings. His cooperation marks a stark departure from his previous stance, prompting the question, will he succumb to pressure now that another substantial prison term looms, or will he adhere to the Omerta Code of Silence? Regardless of the outcome, the Kinahan cartel's anxiety is likely to soar to unprecedented levels. Around 2016-2017, Thomas Bomber Kavanaugh was perched at the pinnacle of his power, seemingly untouchable. Yet, the tide swiftly turned in 2017 when law enforcement conducted a raid on the premises of the Green Oak Industrial Estate in Dublin, unearthing a cache of weapons, drugs, and incriminating documents. This event marked a pivotal moment that forever altered the landscape of Kavanaugh's criminal empire. The raid set in motion an exhaustive investigation, with the Gardai collaborating closely with the UK's National Crime Agency, ultimately leading to Kavanaugh's current lengthy prison sentence. While he serves this substantial term, Kavanaugh recently found himself back in court, facing charges related to firearms offenses. He stands trial alongside two co-accused individuals, Sean Kent and Daniel McLaughlin, as part of the same investigation that also resulted in his son, Jack, and brother-in-law, Liam Byrne, being arrested in Spain and subsequently extradited. During the investigation, intercepted EncroChat messages linked Liam Byrne and Jack Kavanaugh to a network involved in procuring firearms for sale to other organized crime groups. Upon their extradition, they will face the same charges as Kavanaugh, who is currently confronted with five firearms-related charges. The court also learned that Kavanaugh had been accused of sourcing the 11 firearms discovered in Newry in May 2021. The sheer quantity of weaponry ordered by a specific criminal network is a testament to the scale of Kavanaugh's operation in the illicit arms trade. From a law enforcement perspective, this case assumes immense significance. The investigation hinges on EncroChat handles and the intelligence gathered regarding firearms some of which were found stashed in Ireland. The courtroom witnessed a truly astonishing twist as it emerged that Kavanaugh had, in fact, played a pivotal role in guiding law enforcement officers to the weapons location in Newry. Evidently, Kavanaugh had orchestrated the disposal of the arms and orchestrated their exposure to the police as part of a calculated plan. Officers from the NCAA, National Crime Agency, believed that Liam Byrne, Jack Kavanaugh, and Sean Kent had conspired to obstruct justice by devising a scheme to disclose the whereabouts of the weapons, 
all in an effort to secure a reduced prison term for Thomas Cavanaugh. Additionally, Peter Keating's name surfaced in this intricate web of criminal dealings. Keating, who is currently serving an 11-year sentence for his involvement in a failed assassination attempt on James Mago Gately, is suspected of still exerting control over a network of serious criminals operating in the Klondalkin area. Sean Kent stands accused of using the encrypted EncroChat from his prison cell to orchestrate this elaborate plot. In the court's view, he employed the code names Marcos, Cafu, and Firm Cleaner. The initial EncroChat messages came to light when the French authorities gained access to the communication platform and subsequently shared the intelligence with the NCA. As a result of the unraveling of these events, Bomber's criminal network suffered significant dismantling, with many threads tracing back to the Green Oak Raid in 2017. This operation led to the discovery of the hidden weapons cache, triggering the decline of his once formidable criminal empire. The seizure of various documents linked to Kavanaugh's gang unveiled critical insights into the cartel's primary smuggling routes for transporting trucks and weapons from Europe into the UK and Ireland. These documents were subsequently transmitted to the UK, where Kavanaugh resided in the upscale Midlands suburb of Tamworth. This, in turn, initiated a major investigation by the NCAA into an import-export firm. The ensuing raids effectively disrupted the Kinahan cartel's money laundering operations, which had relied on a network of seemingly ordinary companies and money launderers without significant criminal convictions. Following the discovery of the hidden arms cache, law enforcement turned their attention to Bomber's criminal group in the UK. Eventually, the tracking device on a machine containing illicit drugs led officials to the port of Dover. This breakthrough allowed officers to scrutinize numerous other drug shipments. Thomas Cavanaugh, along with his co-accused individuals, Gary Vickery and Daniel Canning, found themselves incarcerated as a result. However, a proceeds of crime case is still in progress, with a particular focus on Kavanaugh's assets, including a stash uncovered at his residence in Tamworth, Birmingham. The records from 2017 illustrated how swiftly the Byrne organization, under Kavanaugh's leadership, re-established itself in the criminal enterprise after the Regency Hotel shooting in February 2016. Just months following the tragic death of David Byrne, they were already hatching plans for new drug and weapon imports. By that Christmas, they were jubilantly celebrating in New York after successfully smuggling their first shipment. Nevertheless, their activities eventually unraveled, leading to law enforcement's discovery of the Green Oak location just a month later. The ongoing investigation into the significant firearms plot has been conducted in parallel with these events and is likely to signal the end of Bomber's criminal career, assuming it still exists at all. The mere suggestion that he may have cooperated with the police spells doom for Bomber Kavanaugh in his dealings with the Kinahans. It's widely understood that the world of organized crime does not take kindly to informants, as Thomas Bomber Kavanaugh hovers on the edge of an uncertain destiny, an intriguing question looms. Will he persist as a wellspring of revelations, collaborating with authorities in the hope of securing clemency? This is a query that not only intrigues the authorities but must surely pique the interest of the cartel as well. Considering that Kavanaugh could potentially face an additional 20 years if found guilty on the firearms charge, cooperation with the authorities might be his only lifeline to reducing his prison sentence. Furthermore, this collaboration could have a ripple effect on the sizable criminal assets case currently looming over him, estimated at a staggering 42 million euros. As the former head of the Keenahan Cartel's UK division, Kavanaugh possesses a formidable bargaining chip one that likely has Daniel Kinahan racked with anxiety. Kavanaugh was often seen as the right-hand man of Daniel Kinahan, and their alliance solidified following the Regency Hotel shooting, particularly in their involvement in the subsequent spate of murders. In a joint attempt to assassinate James Mago Gately, they both lost key associates when the Estonian hitman, Imran Arakas, made a critical error. Kavanaugh's associate, Peter Keating, and Kinahan's confidant, Douglas Glynn, found themselves behind bars. The impending charges against Kavanaugh likely add to the troubles he faces. Daniel Kinahan is certainly a wanted figure in Ireland, and the situation with Kavanaugh could only exacerbate his legal entanglements. Kavanaugh's extensive history with the Kinahan cartel, spanning from its inception, potentially makes him an invaluable resource for the authorities. The cartel must be grappling with ways to impede any cooperation on his part, given the unfathomable levels of paranoia that pervade this underworld. It's evident that Bomber holds secrets that could have a profound and lasting impact on the criminal landscape.
The demise of the Byrne crime group seems imminent, with one brother deceased, the other just extradited from Spain. The son-in-law, Bomber, likely negotiating with the police, and even his son, Jack, in custody. To top it off, cousin fat Freddy Thompson is serving a life sentence for murder. The outlook appears bleak for the Byrne crime group and it remains to be seen how this gripping saga unfolds. That wraps up today's discussion. Please share your thoughts on this topic in the comments section, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for future updates.